Hello, I'm Pastor Penton from the Greater Heights Church of God in Christ located in Tacoma, Washington, 4819 South 12th Street. And we welcome you again at this uh, Sunday morning. I'd just like to encourage you, we are going through some great transition and uh, tribulation in times of doubt, fear, apprehension, division, all the things that can make man disenchanted with his existence. But let me tell you as a believer, we should not result into feeling that we are without a shepherd. And our shepherd is Jesus Christ our Lord, empowered by the Holy Ghost. So we're going to just really just talk about the greatest psalm, I think. It's many psalms, 150 uh, psalms, and one in which is so popular, and that's Psalms uh, 23. We'll be reading from that passage, and we'll probably be reading from other passages uh, because they are, they are words of encouragement. But before we go any farther, <clears throat> let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, first of all, I thank you as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you, O oh God, to give me strength to just read and express and proclaim the Word of God. And this Word that we proclaim today, let it be encouragement to the hearer, because we are living in a time we need to depend upon this great shepherd, and you are our shepherd. And so we ask you to bless every hearer and encourage every believer right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, uh, we ask you to continue to pray uh, this week uh, coming. Certainly, we will be finalizing the uh, President of the United States in terms of his uh, validating him as the President of the United States and our Vice President. Whether we voted for them or not, we need to pray for them especially as believers. Believers, the world is really looking for us for hope, but uh, unfortunately we tie in political beliefs to the point. Yes, there are differences, but we separate seemingly when we have a different opinion. So I'm praying for you, but I'm going to encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your shepherd and your savior. Amen. So in this psalm, Psalm 23, David uh, show his total confidence in God, grace. We have to have confidence because the enemy will have us believing that we are victims of circumstances rather than victors, hallelujah, especially in these times that we live in. So as the psalmist say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So what I'm going to focus on is his power as a shepherd. And we see that in the writings of this psalms. We see that he is our shepherd and therefore we must depend on upon him for our security. Amen. He is our security because he is our shepherd. Let me read scriptures uh, related to him being our security and we'll move farther in our psalm. He said, and I believe in one of our scriptures today, it goes like this in 1 Peter of chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. He's just relating to him as our security because a shepherd is one that over secure the sheep and provide protection 
over the sheep and consequently give them a sense of security because he is leading them and he is the shepherd that will protect them. As First Peter 1 uh, verses uh, 1 uh, and uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy uh, has begotten us again unto a lively hope, praise God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He said, to an inheritance of incorruptible and undefiled that they that, that faded not away reserved in heaven for you, praise God, who are not kept, who are rather, are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Well, if that doesn't give you consolation, what will? If you don't have faith in him as your shepherd, you'll succumb to all the things that are happening in our day today. I have to pray constantly that God will remove fear, anxiety, especially when the pandemic is going the way it is going and people are hearing different uh, versions about the availability of vaccine. Uh, and all of these things are uh, able to disturb you if you don't rely upon your faith in God. God gave us some sense so that we can be wise in our ability to try to prevent from catching the disease, but we still not immune to that. But we as believers must remember that he is our shepherd. But when David said this, look at the hope that we have in the psalm. He said, we shall not want. What, what is he referring to? That doesn't mean we won't need anything. In other words, we should not feel hopeless and dejected and without any possibility of relief. He is our shepherd. We don't want anything or lack anything because he is the father of everything. And back to First Peter, and I love uh, the fact that Peter give us that same hope. Look at it, uh, that seemingly the summons have. And then he says, and that's, uh, I believe in the uh, fourth verse, he says, to an inheritance, he says, of incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. In other words, God got a place of permanency. This word is, world is not our home. We are passing through. But in the meantime, we must have this hope. And that hope should put us in a spirit Hallelujah, that would not allow us to drift into a place of hopelessness. Praise God. And then in the second uh, division, or uh, second verse of Psalm 23, he said, He maketh me to lie down in a green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. Wow. Well, I've heard many discourse on uh, this uh, verse uh, talking about the, 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 the description of the water. Uh, he leading me besides what? Still waters, because uh, as timid as a sheep is, and I've seen uh, sheep when I was in Israel, how they uh, so easily uh, follow, you know, they can go astray so easy, and they're frightened quite easily. Therefore, they need to be reassured uh, by the shepherd. And, uh, and of course, when water is running very fast, it frightens them and they're not able to drink of that because the water would become a danger for them. But then the shepherd knows that they are afraid. So therefore he lead them across uh, waters that they can actually sufficiently uh, uh, satisfy their thirst by being by still water that's so peaceful and they can indulge in satisfying 
uh, their stir, st uh, thirst. And then in the third uh, uh, vision or word for the uh, verse, it says, He restored my soul. He leaded me in the what? Path of righteousness for his name's sake. God has put us on earth to represent him. Hallelujah. And consequently, if we are saying that we are under the shepherd, we should have certain traits of the shepherd so that others can see that the shepherd that we have is leading us uh, in the right way, in righteousness and in his word. And therefore, it is so important that we exemplify, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, exemplify the personality of the shepherd. Hallelujah. I, you know, I remember when we were growing up, and you probably have the same experience, everybody had a nickname where I was from. I'm from, uh, of course, uh, you heard it many times from a small town in Louisiana, but everybody had a nickname. Sometimes these nicknames was not favorable, but they were a representative of what... Uh, uh, people say our traits, our personality was, or how we looked, or whatever it was. So no one really called you uh, officially by your given name, but they refer you to your nickname because it described uh, who you are. So our nickname was Bulldog. <laughs> Some of my uh, brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters may remember that sister may remember that bulldog. I don't know. I don't think I look like a bulldog, but everybody referred to us as that's one of those bulldogs because of the characteristic of the pettings. And so therefore, I think we should be representative of Christ. In other words, our shepherd, we should be walking in righteousness so somebody, hallelujah, can see in us the characteristic of our shepherd. And our shepherd, of course, is our Lord Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Ghost. And somewhere down the line, people should be able to see something in us. Now, let me inform you, this does not mean that you're perfect, but when you're walking and they see that you are, are walking in the, the righteousness of Christ, when you do error, you repent and come back into the knowledge uh, of the, uh, should I say, into the righteousness of God by the example that you set by your repentance. It's not that you will not uh, make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And we always refer to what the scriptures say. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But does that, that mean that uh, our shepherd leaves us? No, it doesn't mean that. He restores us in the third uh, chapter. Uh, yeah, I mean, I read it in the third verse. Where he, he restored my soul. He leaded me in the path, that's plural, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leaded us. And then the fourth verse, he said, Yea, look at this. Look at how the shepherd consoles us. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, hallelujah, I will what? Fear no evil, for thou art with me. Praise God. Thou rob and thy staff, they comfort me. In other words, I got a shepherd that will protect me, even though I'm in the midst of danger. How much more danger are we in today? We witnessed what happened. People anger flaring up, and people feel like that they are not heard, and therefore they're going to do these things that you saw on television and consequently uh, it can frighten you. But thank God, though I walk through the shadow of death, I would what? Fear no evil. How many of you have been uh, uh, in a situation whereby you've been challenged or you've been attacked or you've been threatened or whatever? You would fear no evil, but because we have a shepherd. That doesn't mean you don't be uh, frightened. It simply means that they can't not take your soul. 
they may can harm your physical body, but thanks be to God, we have a shepherd, hallelujah, that will not let us fear because we know where our end will be. I was listening on uh, radio to a Christian a station just uh, prior to coming here. And uh, the the uh, person on radio was talking about if you have lost a loved one before, don't worry because they are in heaven. They are in a place whereby they are in peace because they are with God. I, you see, it doesn't mean that you don't grieve the loss of loved ones. It simply means that our hope is in eternal power. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, make it known that he is our shepherd and we have security. And John talks about this in John 10, uh, uh, chapter 10 and verse 27 and to 29. And this is how Jesus characterized us and how we should be as, a, as sheep. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, he said, and they follow me. He said, I, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Look at that hope. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He said, my father, which gave them me, <laughs> them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Wow, look at that power. <laughs> look at the word of God. It ain't because I said it. I'm simply reading the word of God because we need to be reassured that even in this time of chaos and time of, of diver, uh, diversity, division and hate and evil and violence, we will not be plucked out of the hand of God. Can you say amen? If I, I can't even hear you because we are doing this virtual. But I can say, if you believe that, you should be saying amen. Hallelujah. Because he said, though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I look at this declaration that David said in this full verse. I will fear no evil for thou art what? With me. Hallelujah. Thou rod. Uh, protect you with that rod, and what? Thy staff, they comfort me. Aren't you comforted when you know you got someone who know how to use uh, uh, these tools to protect you? We know we got a father that know every means to protect you. I, I, remember, I remember years ago, uh, I, you know, and I'm sure you do too, when you had people threaten you, and and if you had a big brother, hallelujah, you you know that you were, and he'd be with you. You tend to say, if you're gonna fight me, you're gonna have to fight him. I remember uh, an incident, and this was kind of a miraculous incident. Uh, it was uh, we had a young man in the projects named Robert Badon. What a name! He was the most uh, notorious bully in the project where I live. And uh, he lived right in, in seeing distance from us. And, but he always had tried to intimidate everybody. I remember I was walking past his resident and he had a hammer. And he threw that hammer at me, literally. I didn't want to look that way because I was in you know, I knew that that would intimidate, I mean, I would be intimidated more. But he threw the hammer, and I was walking so fast, the hammer actually got caught between my legs and flipped right back to him. <laughs> I believe that was an angel that took that hammer and threw it back at him. I didn't bother to look back, but I, uh, you know, enough to see what happened other than I could see him looking puzzle because the, the same uh, weapon that he threw at me came right back at him. And I, I can tell you this, I wasn't a Christian then, but thanks be to God for such an event. And I believe God protects us uh, sometimes like that, beyond our ability, but yet he would do it 
to give us to know that somebody is watching over us. And let's go to the fifth verse of the 23rd Psalm. Look what the psalmist said uh, again. He said, Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of what? My enemies. And then he said, Thou anointed my uh, head with oil and my cup run it over. Wow. Uh, I always refer to that when uh, the devil is getting, I uh, think he's getting the glory by uh, over intimidating you. you. You can just rejoice as you sit at a table. A table represents, to me, a place where you can be served, a place where you can you eat. For example, when you're eating, uh, you're usually sitting at a table, and consequently you're being served a, a meal, and uh, and you can eat. This is what the psalmist is trying to encourage us, as that we have a table that God has prepared for us. The sufficiency of our needs is taken care of at this table. And reading another uh, scripture from Romans 8, uh, 38 and 39, he said, this is Paul, he said, for I am what? Persuaded. This is the conviction of his heart. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, look at, look at it, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, shall what? Uh, and then he goes on to say, nor height, nor death, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can say which is in Christ Jesus our shepherd. Hallelujah. Nothing. Look how he itemized all these things. Let's go through it again. Neither death, that's the highest fear we used to have, death, uh, nor light, nor life, anything that are happening while you are living, like today, all of these things, nor angels. Uh, uh, principalities, no power. Talking about these spirits, demons, none of these things. Hallelujah, share, separate, not things present, not things to come. Go ahead, Paul. Give us a consolation that you're serving, hallelujah, a shepherd. And this is what we have in the year 2021 and ongoing and forevermore that we have a God, hallelujah, that will keep us. And that will, hallelujah, give us enough power to understand that nothing can separate us from his love. As uh, the psalmist also say, he, he anointed my head with oil and my cup run out. He give us abundance. In other words, we have enough to be sufficient to survive in this age. Amen. God bless you. And then the sixth uh, division of Psalm. He says this, and this is the last uh, one. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. This is what we just uh, read, something related to that. All the days of my life and what I shall dwell. This is beautiful. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. I always say that. If the enemy somehow uh, get people to try to harm you, remember that your life is with Christ. And we are living in a day where we need to trust in him for the Lord is your shepherd. And this is so uh, important. When David wrote this, I'm sure he had suffered Enemies, his enemies trying to kill him, his son, a lot of things try to uh, uh, cause David to lose confidence in God. That's why God, through the Spirit of God uh, himself, through his inspiration, gave him this inspiration of Psalm uh, to console him. For he had to remind himself that the Lord is his shepherd. And I was also reading 
that uh, in we skipped uh, uh, the uh, one uh, the Psalm 24 and go to Psalm 25. L look what it says because this is the reassurance of what he established as God being his shepherd in Psalm 23. Look how he does it. Look what he said. He said, unto thee, O Lord. Look at him. He said, do I lift up my soul? Wow. And then he said, O oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemy triumph over me. In other words, God, make them ashamed. Make them ashamed when they think they had you down, when they think they have you undermined, and they try to make you hang down your head. Hallelujah. Don't give up because we got a shepherd. Hallelujah. He will walk alongside you. He will be with you to guide you. He will give you strength. Hallelujah, to give you the inspiration as a son has had, because he will not let your enemy triumph over you. They may hurt you, they may harm you, but they will not, hallelujah, overcome you. And then he said in the third verse of that, 25th uh, division, he said, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. There are going to be people who hate you, who try to shame you, who try to lie on you. But rejoice and forever rejoice because you serve a God that will not make you ashamed. God got people right now. I, believe, I, I really believe God got angels that will protect you. I, I always refer to my Navy, you know, and I was there. You got to understand, I was on ship <laughs> for three years, three months, and 27 days. So it was a lot happened on ship that developed my, uh, my ability to, to trust God. And I had some of these events that happened to me that would show that God's word is true. I remember, uh, one guy was uh, trying to attack me, and he really, uh, I don't know, I, I had enemies. I thought everybody liked me, but that wasn't true. I had a lot of enemies because of what I was preaching. I remember uh, this guy saw people were going to jump me on ship, at least this one guy, big bully-looking guy, and uh, uh, somehow he came to my rescue. I mean, I wasn't running from him, but I sure could not. You know, my, I only weighed 135, 140 pounds in the Navy. But this guy was a big bruiser. And he came, but this other guy came right in at the time. He said, don't mess with Pitt. I'll take care of this. <laughs> and, and somehow he pushed the guy behind the door. And next thing I know, boom, bam, you know, we heard a lot of knocking and going. It was him defending me. I did not ask him to do that. But the point I'm trying to say, I believe sometimes God sent angels uh, to protect you and, uh, and to make them ashamed. He said, then the fourth verse, he said, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. That's what I want. That's what I really want. And I know in the days that we're in, sometimes I find myself not being able to focus not being able to stay, you know, uh, on a path. I get easily distracted. But, oh, God, hallelujah. When I look, I keep my eyes open. Look in the dark room and I just pray, Lord, you know. You know, that's the best prayer uh, when I say that I pray. Because sometimes I get, you can get lost in trying to articulate something that you don't really know anything about. You know, see a lot of big words that think you're going to impress God. But when you get desperate <laughs> and to a point where you need to cry out in desperation, you can only say, help, Lord. Hallelujah. But my prayer is, you know, Lord, because you are my shepherd. And then he says, hallelujah, in the fifth verse of that 25th division, he said, lead me in thy truth 
and teach me, for thou art God of my salvation. Of thee do I wait all the days. And then David goes on to say, remember, O Lord. He said, remember, O Lord, uh, hallelujah, thy tender mercy and thy love and kindness, for they have been ever of old. And then it says, remember not the sins of my youth. <laughs> That's important. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgression according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to close it there because we need to ask God to take away the, 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 the mental thing that the enemy tried to do to oppress you for sins that you've done so long ago. And he'll make you feel the, the guilt and feel burdened by things that God himself has already forgiven you. And because God, hallelujah, is able to keep you from evil. In 2 Thessalonians, it says this, 3 and 3, but the Lord is what? Faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Hallelujah. And one other verse, John 6 and verse 37, it says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will no wise cast him out. So the sins that you've done in your youth, or uh, you in the past, or it may be even yesterday, if the Holy Spirit have convicted your heart, and consequently, hallelujah, you have been forgiven of your sins and God himself have established himself to be your shepherd, then you should rely upon his faith or on his righteousness or his word instead of rely upon how you feel sometimes. Sometimes I feel like jumping over walls and leaping over hills and sometimes I can't hardly get out of the bed. But thanks be to God, when I look through the hills from which cometh my help, and be established in my mind that my help come from God. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then he goes on to say again, he lay, I lay down, he let me lay down. Hallelujah. Besides still waters, and I can rest. So don't let the enemy bring up your sin to the point where you can't rejoice today because he's your shepherd. He's your shepherd. Say, shepherd, I need you. I'm thirsty. I need a drink. I'm hungry. I need food. I need inspiration. I had to do that today. Give me what you want me to share with your people today. I feel, well, any of God's word is what he wants us to share. And he wants you to live by his word. The Bible says we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And these are the things that come out of God's mouth. And let me just read um, one other scripture. Hallelujah. And it says in the 12th uh, verse, of the 26th division of Psalm, the last verse. He said, my foot standeth in an even place in the congregation will I bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let God become your shepherd today. Right now, you can do that. You can see God, I've been walking alone without you for a long time. Now today, I want you to come into my life and I will receive you as my Lord. Forgive me of all my sins. And Lord, let the blood of Jesus cover me, make atonement for my sins. 
I believe that you died and the agony that you suffered on the cross was for my sins. But the victory, hallelujah, you demonstrated when you were put in the tomb and somehow on the third day, somehow you were lifted up. And you said, if I be lifted up earlier, you would draw on men unto me. But now you are lifted up. And then when you ascended unto heaven, you said the same way, hallelujah, you see me go, I shall return again. Hallelujah. I feel great right now because I know it was the word of God. It was the spirit of God that gave me this message for you. Because it was simply the word of God that we shared with you. It was the word of God we gave to you. And now you can eat it and you share hunger no more. And then you can drink up the water which Jesus told the woman at the well. He was the water. And if you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to enter into your kingdom today. So as soon as you uh, get off this uh, uh, broadcast, if you will, or this, hear this sermon, whether you're listening on YouTube, you ought to get your word and believe in it or call your church, or call a minister, or call someone who know the word, and get with you to pray with you that you may uh, be reaffirmed in, in what the word of God have already established that you can have. For he is your shepherd, and then you can be like David. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. God bless you. And now bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And thank you for your love that you have demonstrated to me. And thank you for today. And let your power be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace be unto you. God bless you.